We're going to look live right now at Bellevue Hospital here in Manhattan. That's where Dr. Craig Spencer, back from treating Ebola patients in West Africa, is in isolation right now. And we want to take a, a look at where he lives. His apartment has been sealed off. The apartment building has not been, but his apartment has, and it will be decontaminated like we've seen so many times now with this disease. And the bowling alley he went to the night before he started feeling symptoms also shut down right now. A lot of precautions being taken. A CDC GO team has been deployed to the city. The first big test for them and the new Ebola czar. We have team coverage beginning with ABC's Lindsay Davis at the hospital. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. Bellevue Hospital had been conducting drills for just this kind of scenario for the past two months. And this morning, Dr. Craig Spencer is here. Officials monitoring his every move leading up to the moment he first noticed his temperature start to increase. And officials also saying he started to see the symptoms of fatigue as early as Tuesday. This morning, 33-year-old Dr. Craig Spencer and his live-in fiance Morgan Dixon are both quarantined in Bellevue Hospital. Their apartment sealed off. Two of his friends also under quarantine as New York officials try to calm public fears while racing to find out who else he may have had contact with. We've been preparing for months for the threat posed by Ebola. We have clear and strong protocols which are being scrupulously followed and were followed in this instance. Seven days ago, Spencer arrived back in New York after treating Ebola patients in Guinea for Doctors Without Borders. He flew home through Brussels, arriving at New York's JFK airport Friday, passing several health screenings along the way. When he arrived in the United States, he was also well uh, with no symptoms. Once back in New York, we've learned Dr. Spencer took his temperature twice a day, feeling fine except for fatigued. But just one day before his dire diagnosis, the doctor traveled to Manhattan's popular Highline Park, dined at a meatball shop, even taking the subway all the way from his Harlem apartment to Brooklyn. He even took an Uber car, although health officials now say the driver is at very low risk. His last stop, this bowling alley in Brooklyn, called the Gutter Alley. The bowling alley is now shut down. But officials insist that Spencer would not have been contagious until he developed that fever Thursday morning. Another encouraging sign, officials say Bellevue has been running drills like this for weeks. We have had a full coordinated effort that has been working literally night and day. Still, Spencer's neighbors, like so many New Yorkers this morning, can't help but worry. Health officials want to stress that Ebola is not an airborne illness. Now, Dr. Spencer was a doctor at another hospital here in New York, but he had not treated any patients since his return. Robin. All right, Lindsay, ABC medical editor Dr. Richard Besser is here with more on this. We heard from the governor, we've heard from the mayor of New York City that they have been prepared for the possibility of this. But yet, as Lindsay said, with him on the subway and the bowling alley, there are naturally some concerns. Yeah, I mean, you have to understand the fear in a crowded city, someone with Ebola uh, walking around. But this is really a difficult infection to pick up early on. One of the things we saw from Dallas and we learned from Dallas, the people who lived with Mr. Duncan, they were in the apartment with him for four days while he was sick and four days after not one of them got sick and in this situation Dr. Spencer was monitoring his temperature as soon as he had a fever he was isolated he was contained and so he wasn't out and about when he was spread it could have been spreading fluids and infecting people and there were other lessons that were learned from what happened in Dallas with Mr. Duncan and in, in so many ways the initial response here was quite different yeah I mean it was so different in Dallas someone walked in off the street uh, they weren't thinking about Ebola and they ended up sending him home. Here, they were thinking about Ebola. They've been training for this. He was monitoring symptoms. They called in the EMTs. They came in full hazmat gear, so no one was exposed. Took him to Bellevue, was received by people in full hazmat, and immediately put in isolation. Very, very different situation. You were very busy on Twitter last night. Yeah. And you got yeah. a lot of questions about the fact that this doctor was in Africa yeah. and came back and has Ebola here. How do you address the concerns of people about the border? Yeah, I, I, there, there are a couple things. Some people are saying this this is proof we should close our border. I think it's the exact opposite. It's proof that until we knock this out of West Africa, we're going to see more disease here, and we have to have more Mr. Dr. Spencer's helping out over there. Uh, all right. And you are going to be active again on Twitter. He will be taking your questions, Dr. Richard Besser, on Twitter.